Okay, so this next section that we're going to cover is going to be on something called the law of signs. Now, we're still going to be using trig, um, so that part has not changed. <clears throat> um, the law of signs, and then the next lesson that we're going to learn called the law of cosines, is something that we use to solve for angle measurements in side lanes when we're dealing with triangles that are not necessarily a right triangle. So before, when we were solving triangles, when we used sine, cosine, and tangent, every single one of those were right triangles. They had one angle that was 90 degrees. For these ones, that does not have to be the case. So of what the law of sine says is for any triangle, triangle ABC, <coughs> with angles that are labeled A, B, and C, where side A is opposite angle A, side B is opposite angle B, side C is opposite angle C, this is the equation that we have. So if we take a side line, so side A, and divide it by the sine of the angle that is across from it, that will equal a different side length divided by the sine of the angle that's across from it. So here we show all three of these fractions are equal. So A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. But when we actually solve, we're only going to be dealing with two fractions at a time. Okay? So in the first example that we see, so we have this triangle, once again, ABC. It's a slightly different orientation than this one, but that doesn't matter. The only part that matters is side A is opposite angle A, side B is opposite angle B, side C is opposite angle C. So since this is angle A, the one that's across from it will be side A. This is angle B, so the value that is 7, that is side B. And then this is angle C, so this side over here would be side C. Now there's going to be two different types of questions that we're going to see. One's where we have two angle measurements in one side length, one where we have two side lengths and one angle measurement. We will be solving them the same way as far as the equation, but the way that we get our final answer will be just a little bit different. For this first type that we have here, we have two angles and one side length. So since we're solving the triangle, we need to find all missing sides and all missing angles. So because we already have two out of the three angles, we can solve for the third angle because we know all of the angles have to add up to 180. So we're going to take angle A, which we do not know, plus angle B, which is 35, plus angle C, which is 105, and all of these angles add up to 180. So we add together the two that we know, so 35 and 105, that add together to give us 140. And then we subtract it to the other side, so 180 minus 140 gives us 40 degrees. So now we have all three angle measurements for the triangle. So now we just need to solve for the two missing side lengths. So since we have all of the angles, it does not matter the order that we solve for the side lengths. So in this case, I usually just go alphabetical order. So we want side length A, so we have to use angle A. So side A we do not know, but that's one of the things we're solving for, divided by the sine of angle A. So divided by the sine of 40 degrees, equals the sine, or sorry, equals the side length divided by the sine of any other side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the triangle and we're going to figure out which side length we have. The side length that we have is side length B. So therefore we're going to be using this middle fraction. Side length B goes on the top, so that's going to be 7. And then the sine of angle B, that's what goes on the bottom. So the sine of 35. So now we have our fraction here and we have one unknown value. We do not know the value of A. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to cross multiply to solve for A. So we're going to do A times the sine of 35 equals 7 times the sine of 40. Now to get A by itself, we're going to take the sine of 35 and we're going to divide that to the other side. Now this part is going to go in the calculator, but we do have to be careful with our parentheses. So in your calculator, you're going to do 7 times the sine of 40. Make sure you close the parentheses after the 40, and then you will divide that by the sine of 35. So if you plug that into your calculator and hit enter, you are going to get side length A is equal to 7.84.
So now we have all three angles and we have two out of the three sides. So now to solve for the remaining side, we're just going to use the law of sines one more time. Now for the first fraction that we set up, we can use any fraction we want as far as the ratios. We now have side A and angle A, and we have um, B and angle B. So therefore we could use any of those as our starting point. Usually for me though, I will use the numbers that they gave me originally in the question. This one that we just got here is something that we calculated, so this is an approximation. It is not 100% exact. So therefore, we don't necessarily want to use this because it might make your final answer off by just a little bit. So um, of what we'll do is our first fraction, we're going to use this same 7 over the sine of 35 like we had before. So now we want side length C. We have angle C is 105. So this will equal C over the sine of 105. Now from here, we finish solving this just like what we did in the first part. We're going to cross multiply. So we have 7 times the sine of 105. I'm kind of running out of room here. Equals C times the sine of 35. Now we'll finish this just like what we did in the first one. To get C by itself, we'll divide both sides by the sine of 35. So in your calculator, you'll do 7 times the sine of 105, and you will divide that by the sine of 35. When you do that, that gives us side length C is equal to 11.79. So we now have all angles and all side lengths. So this is how we solve when we have two angles and one side to start the problem. In the next example, we're going to see what happens when we have the opposite, if we have two side lengths but only one angle measurement. Okay, so in this next example, we're going to look at a situation where we have two side lanes and one angle measurement. Now the key to being able to use the law of sines, this is something that we'll talk a little bit more about for the next lesson, but the key to being able to use the law of sines is you have to have one pair where you have an angle and its opposing side lane. As long as you have one of those pairs and just any other value, it doesn't matter if it's an angle or a side lane, you can use the law of sines to solve for the entire triangle, okay? So, because we have two side lengths here and one angle, that means that the first value that we're going to calculate is going to be an angle instead of um, a side length. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the pair that we have. So we have the 63, we have the 5.5. So we're going to do 5.5 over the sine of 63. Now we look for the other value that we have. We have this side length here, which is opposite of angle B. So that means that this is going to be side length B. So that just means we use the combination of angle B and side length B, and that is what we have to solve for first. So side length B is 4.7 divided by the sine of angle B. Now, since we do not know what angle B is, we're just going to write the sine of B. Now from here, what we're going to do, just like what we did in the first one, is we're going to cross multiply. So we're going to have 4.7 times the sine of 63 equals 5.5 times the sine of B. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to divide over the 5.5 so that we can get the sine of B by itself. Now if we took this part and divided it in the calculator, this would not give us B, this would give us the sine of B. I'm going to rewrite this up here. So we have the sine of B is equal to 4.7 sine of 63 over 5.5. So because we need to get rid of the sine, this is something we did when we were solving triangles before, we need to take the sine inverse of both sides to get rid of the sine. So this is that button in your calculator that looks like sine to the negative 1 power. So we have B is equal to sine inverse of 4.7 sine of 63 over 5.5. Now, once again, you're going to need to be careful when you plug this in your calculator. So you're going to go sine inverse, so second sine, then you'll type in the top. 4.7 sine of 63, make sure you close the parentheses after the 63, and then you will divide that by 5.5. When you plug that into your calculator, you should get angle B is equal to approximately 49.59 degrees.
Okay? So now we have two sides, two angles. So the next thing that we're going to do, anytime we have two angles, immediately the next easiest thing to do, solve for your third angle. So we're going to take the two that we have, add them together, and then subtract that from 180. So we'll do angle A, which we don't have, plus angle B, which is 49.59, plus 63, is equal to 180. So we'll add these two together and then subtract that to the other side, just like what we did in the previous problem. And we get that angle A is equal to 72.41 degrees. So now we have all three angle measurements and we have two out of the three side lengths. So now the final thing that we are going to do is we need to solve for that last side, which is side length A. Now, once again, this 5.5 and the sine of 63, those were values that we were originally given in the problem. So I'm going to use those values again in my first fraction. 5.5 over the sine of 63. Now we have angle A, we want side length A, so we will set this equal to side A over the sine of A, which is 72.41 degrees. Now, because we're solving for a side length, we're just going to cross multiply and then plug it into the calculator. We do not have to do the sine inverse for this part since we're not solving for an angle. So we'll cross multiply. So we have 5.5 times the sine of 72.41 equals A times the sine of 63. Now our final step, divide over the sine of 63. And then the rest just goes into the calculator just like what we've done before. So when we do that, we get side length A is equal to 5.88. So now we have all missing values. We have all the sides and we have all of the angle measurements. Okay, so this is what we're going to use for the law of sines. So if you start with two angles, one side length, you're going to solve it like example number one. Solve for the missing angle, use the law of sines two different times to solve for the two missing side lengths. If it's like this one where we have two sides and one angle, you're going to start by using the law of sines, and you'll have to use the inverse sign for this one to solve for one of the angles. Solve for your third angle by adding the two angles you have, subtracting from 180, and then just use the regular law of sines one final time in order to solve for the missing side. So regardless of the type of question, you'll always have to use the law of sines two separate times. So I hope that these two examples made sense. If you have questions, feel free to reach out.